Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Here I am back with another fun video for you guys. And in this video we are going to create another very interesting component for our Ionic applications. So in the last video we created a directive which allowed us to hide our header based on the scrolling in the page. So if you haven't yet checked out that video, make sure you check out that video as well. And in this video what we are going to do is create another fun component which is accordion. So the default set of components that comes with Ionic does not have an accordion component and many a times we need this kind of component in our applications. So this is what we are going to create in this video. So our accordion component will look like this. It will have a title and if we click on this title or if we tap on it, it will expand and display the rest of the content. So this is how usually accordions work. You click on them, they expand and you click on them again and they collapse. So this is what I have done here. I have replicated this accordion component a number of times just to demonstrate how our finished application is gonna look like. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I'll do is create a new Ionic application. It's called Accordion Ionic. So real quick, I'll open this application in Visual Studio Code and get started. So here I have opened my application in Visual Studio Code. And the first thing I'll do is create a new Ionic component and for the rest of the video we'll be working in this component. So we'll call this component Accordion. Okay, so I'll just type in Ionic G, G for generate and then I'll type in component because I want to create a new component and then lastly I want to type in the name of the component. For now let's just call it Accordion and press enter. So this generated a new folder in my source folder in the application. It's called components and inside this components folder I have a folder called accordion and inside this folder I have a number of files. So I have accordion.html which is responsible for the view of our component. I have accordion.scss which is responsible for the styling of our custom component. And lastly I have accordion.ts which is basically the controller. So all the code will go inside this file and all the HTML will go inside the HTML file. And similarly all the CSS styling will go inside the SCSS file. I have this one more file components.module.ts which is here to implement lazy loading which we do not want to get into right now. So I'll just go ahead and delete this file and now I'll just go to my app.module.ts file and import the component that we have just created. Now that I have imported my accordion component, I'll need to pass it into my declarations array as well. So I'll just do that and now I can close my app.module.ts file. So far we have created a new Ionic component and we have imported that component into our application. It does nothing. If you open up accordion.ts file, all you'll see is that in the constructor we have a console log which says hello accordion component component. So let's just run this application using Ionic serve and see if we get this console log in the browser's console window or not. If we get this console log in the browser's console window, it means that everything is good so far and we can proceed with working on our component. So we do not get any console log and that's because I have not used this component anywhere. So I'll just go to my pages folder and on my home.html, I'll just remove all this content from here and instead I'll put a tag called accordion. I'll save the file and now let's get back to our browser and you can see that I get the text hello world and I also get the console log hello accordion component component. So our component is now working and we have successfully used the component in our home page. Now all we need to do is modify this component to fit our needs. So the first thing I'll do is go to my accordion.html file get rid of all this content from here and instead what I'll do is create an ion card here. Inside this ion card I have two things. The first one is ion card header and the second one is ion card content. The ion card header will contain the title of our accordion while the ion card content will be hidden by default. When the user will click on the ion card header, the ion card content will be displayed to the user. When the user will click again on the ion card header, the ion card content will collapse. So let's just go ahead and create an ion card header. And inside this ion card header, for now I'm just gonna define a static text value. Let's just give it my name, okay? Next, I'll just go ahead and create an ion card content. Let's see how it looks like in the browser. 
So as of now, I'm just getting this iron card header. I'll just go ahead and fill up the iron card content as well with some dummy text. So I'll just paste that here. And let's save this and have a look at our application in the browser. So the card now looks pretty decent. We have a lot of room taken up by the card content and the title displays just right on the top. Now what I want to do is define a click event for my iron card header because I want to take an action whenever the user clicks on the iron card header. So I'll just define a click event right here. Okay. And whenever the user clicks on this iron card header, I want to call a function. Let's just call this function toggle accordion. Okay. Let's save the file and let's head over to our accordion.ts file and create this function right away. Okay, so this is the function that will be called every time the user taps or clicks on the accordion's header. Now inside this function, what we want to do is first check if the accordion is already collapsed, then we want to expand it. And if the accordion is expanded, then we want to collapse it. So we need a variable to store the current state of the accordion. So I'll just create a variable right here. I'll just get rid of this text and I'll get rid of this console log from my constructor. I'll create a variable here called accordion expanded and by default, I'll set its value to false, which means that when our application loads or when this component loads, the accordion will be collapsed by default or the accordion expanded variable will be set to false. Next, I need to access my iron card content from my accordion.ts file. And how do I do that? I need to define a local variable right here using a hash. So I'll just call this cc for card content. Okay. And now using this variable, I can access my iron card content in my accordion.ts file. So I'll import view child and using view child, I can access that variable called cc. So I'll just create a view child object here. And this takes in the name of the variable that we provided to our HTML tag right here. So the name is CC and that is what I'm going to pass in here. Okay. After that, I'll pass in a variable name that will store the reference to this iron card content. Okay. Let's call it card content and this will be of the type any for now. And now what we can do is try and log card content to our console and see if we get some information about our iron card content. But if we do that inside our constructor, we will get undefined because the constructor gets executed even before the view of our application is ready. And if the view of our application is not ready, the iron card content does not exist. So the console log that we'll get will always display undefined. So we need to wait for a while while our view gets rendered. And once our view gets rendered, then we can try and log it to the console. So I'll just import a module called on in it and this is actually an interface so i'll just implement this interface in my class okay and this interface requires me to create a function called ng on in it and this is the function which will be executed as soon as our view is ready or the component is completely initialized okay so here let's just try and log card content to the console let's save this and see how it looks like in the browser so you can see that I get a console log, I get an object and inside that object, I have a native element object and inside that native element object, I have a lot of information that I can use to modify how my iron card content looks like. Okay. So instead of logging this dot card content to the console, what we need to do is use this dot card content dot native element because this is the object which contains all the information that we need. So now if we look at the browser, you can see that I get iron card content and inside it, I have all the text. Okay. Next, what I want to do is apply some CSS to my accordion. So basically I'll be applying CSS styles to my iron card header and to my iron card content. So let's just go ahead and do that. So I'll just open accordion.scss file and in here I'll be pasting in a few lines of CSS code. So basically what I'm doing here is applying colors to my card header. So the background color of my card header will be the primary color of our application and the text color of our card header will be white. On my card content, what I'm doing is removing all the padding and I'm specifying a maximum height of zero which will make sure that my card content is initially not displayed. It will not be displayed because the maximum height that we allow to our card content is zero pixels. Okay. So basically we will not be able to see it as soon as it loads. Now let's save this and have a look at it in the browser. And you can see that the colors are applied. It looks nice. 
and the card content area is not displayed at all because the height of ion card content is 0 pixels. Now what we need to do is modify that height based on the click event. So I'll just head over to my accordion.ts file. What I'll do is in my toggle accordion function, I'll check for the value of accordion expanded. So I'll just check if accordion expanded value is true, then what we want to do? We want to reset the maximum height to zero pixels. And if the value of accordion expanded is false, then I want to apply a maximum height of say 500 pixels. Okay, so in order to modify the CSS properties of a native element in our view, we need to import a module called renderer. Okay, and I'll have to pass it in my constructor as well. Okay, and now using renderer, I can modify the CSS properties of my iron card content using the reference card content. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and paste in a line of code here. And in this line of code, what I'm doing here is using the set element style function and specifying this dot card content dot native element as the first parameter because this is the element that I want the styles to be applied to and the CSS property that I want to modify is maximum height and I just want to set this property to zero pixels as what I want to do is change the value of maximum height to say 500 pixels. You can specify a maximum value that you can think of or that you think that the content will never reach that height. So I think that 500 pixels is a pretty generous height and my content will never exceed that. So I'm using 500 pixels here. If you are expecting longer content, then you can just make this like 1000 pixels or so. So let's save this and see how it works in the browser. So this is my iron card title. I'm just gonna click on it and you can see that the card content shows up. I'll click on it again and the card content does not hide. And this is because I have not changed the value of this dot accordion expanded. So every time we click on this title or every time the toggle accordion function is called, I wanna invert the value of this dot accordion expanded. Let's save this and check it out in the browser. I'll click on the title and the content shows up. I'll click on it again and the content hides. This works fine but there are two main issues with this right now. The first issue that the transition is not animated. It just happens in a snap, okay? So we want to animate it so that it looks nicer. And the second issue that I have here is that the iron card content does not have any padding on the top and bottom. So I want to apply that padding as well. We do not have the padding because we have removed all the padding right here in my card content. And this is kind of important. So we need to apply that padding as soon as the card content shows up and we need to remove that padding as soon as the card content hides. So let's just go ahead and do that as well. Before that, I'll make sure that we apply a CSS animation to this whole transition so that when we click on the card title, the transition takes some time to show the card content and similarly it should take some time to hide the card content. I'll paste that code right here. And using this code, what I'm doing is defining a WebKit transition on my max height property and it should take 500 milliseconds. Okay, so whenever I try to modify the max height property, it will take 500 milliseconds. Similarly, I have defined a transition for my padding as well. So whenever I'll try to modify the padding property, it will take 500 milliseconds. So now all we need to do is use the renderer again to modify the padding. So I'll just do that right here. So what we are doing here is that we are resetting the padding to zero pixels vertically and 16 pixels, which is the default horizontal padding. Similarly, in my else, I'll paste the code to modify the padding. So here I am setting the padding to 13 pixels, which is default for iron card content. So the vertical padding will be 13 pixels if the card content is showing up. And if the card content is not showing up, then the padding will be zero pixels and this whole transition will take 500 milliseconds to show and hide. Let's save this and see how it looks like in the browser. So this is my iron card title. I'll click on it and it animates and shows up the iron card content. The padding is there and the whole effect was animated. Now I'll click on it again and notice the animation as the content hides. Okay, so this is how it's gonna work. You can replicate this iron card content as many times as you want. Now that you have created a component, you can use this component as many times as you want. And this is the prime benefit of creating components. You create them once and you use them multiple times 
and you can even distribute this component to be used in other applications. So make sure that you try it out, play around with it a little bit and if you face any problems, feel free to post in the comment section below. If you like this video, share it with your friends and colleagues. Thanks for watching.